And now we welcome uh, the mayor of the great city of Danbury, Connecticut, Joe Cavo, to the show. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. What's going Good morning, on? Morning, Ethan and Lou. How are you both today? We're You're hanging doing great. Sounds like you have a rat problem there at the station. Yeah, a rat yeah, problem. They're going round and round. Oh, I see. What goes around comes around. Yeah, well, we're not wearing any on, pants. Don't you watch TV? No commercials. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, we do. I do. Ethan doesn't. No, so I, I keep him up to speed. You know, not. Uh, I, I wanted to thank you for uh, getting back to me so quick the other day when we started talking about dirt bikes and ATVs. You and I had a brief discussion, and I quoted you in my article about it, but, of course, no one got to hear that. So let's, while we have you, talk about this uh, for just a second. This past weekend, there were at least two arrests that I know of uh, as it relates to illegal dirt bikes and or, and or ATVs. And uh, just just tell us what, what it is that, that goes on out there, what is illegal, and, and what the Danbury PD has seen, observed, and, and what they do about it. So early in the spring, you know, we had noticed that there was a real uptick in, uh, you know, these mini bikes and dirt bikes and um, ATVs on the street. As normally happens, uh, you know, as warm weather approaches, people have these things over the winter, they get them over the winter, and they're, you know, excited to get out there and get on them, but uh, city streets are not the place for them, and uh, they're not legal, they're not, uh, they don't, they lack the safety equipment uh, that are needed in order to, you know, integrate with cars and, you know, registered, properly registered and built motorcycles, trucks, and so, you know, it's a real problem, it's a real safety issue, and, uh, you know, we're concerned about it. We're concerned about what seems to be like an uptick, you know, throughout the region, uh, you know, has been happening uh, you know, more and more. And we just want to make sure that we get out ahead of it, you know, let people, remind people that, you know, it's illegal to operate them on city streets. It's illegal to uh, operate ATVs and mini bikes, motors, dirt bikes on city streets. And so we, you know, the police are, you know, enforcing the law which is, you know, their job, and they're doing a good job at it. And uh, we're also going to look at strengthening some ordinances that will help give them a little more teeth to help enforce those laws. Now, if memory serves me correct, and it fails me often, you mm -hmm. can actually, or at least in New York years ago when I looked at it, you can register a dirt bike for street driving, I think. You could if it had the proper safety equipment. Okay. And so I think that's, you know, we'd have to get into motor vehicle law on that, but I'm fairly certain, like, it has to have turn signals and a horn, and um, it has to be a certain size, and, you know, there's requirements for them. But, um, you know, a lot of the stuff we're seeing on the streets now, you know, are not, uh, you know, cannot and, you know, do not meet the requirements under motor vehicle law for street use. Right, and, and that's not what we're talking about. I'm just, you know, talking about... Let, just letting people know that you could technically do that if you had all the right safety equipment. You could get it registered and get it legalized and sure. all that stuff. Get it insured. You know, make sure you're wearing a helmet or make sure you're wearing safety glasses at least. And it doesn't have a helmet law, uh, not a mandatory helmet law. And so you have to have at least glasses on. Um, you know, and so we just want people to be safe out there. And we want, you know, the other motorists that are interacting with them to be safe as well. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to see these little machines, that, you know, especially without the safety equipment on them. And so it puts somebody else at risk for maybe having an accident with them. And then if that happens, you know, it's, you know, usually who's the loser in a motorcycle accident? Yeah. You know, motorcycle versus car, motorcycle versus truck. You know, there's usually one loser. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's not good. And so we just want to make sure people are being safe and, you know, taking the proper precautions. And you're not the heavy here because I've been, a, I mean, you, you have to act as the heavy and so does the police department. But uh, you, you're not wrong when you say it's dangerous. I saw one the other I was out looking for a photograph for this article that I wrote. And I watched a group that was made up of one dirt bike and then five scooters, no safety equipment on any of the bikes. And there was a race down Main Street, a race, right. a fender fell off the bike, <laughs> the kid pulled the scooter off because the guy who lost the fender off the dirt bike didn't notice he lost it. He ran out into traffic, picked up the fender, and then cut somebody off when he was getting back on the road. So you're not, you know, you're, you're not talking about, you're not just talking for the sake of talking. It's going on. Right. It's happening, and, you know, we want to, you know, our duty 
And I said this the other day. To what, are you, what are you pouring a bourbon there? You're getting frustrated. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I'm making my tea. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, it's all right. I thought you were just like, I've had it with these people. <laughs> no one listens to me. I'm drinking. You don't hear any ice. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pouring, right? yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, it, it's the law. And, you know, we need to make sure we enforce it. It's there for a reason. And, you know, if, if people aren't happy with the law, then we need to get together and talk about changing it. But I don't, I don't see that happening in this particular instance. Danbury has a love affair, a love-hate relationship with its roads. Uh, now let's talk about, <laughs> in case you haven't read my new article yet, uh, <laughs> there's a... There's a thing on Stadley Rough Road that uh, has been made an issue, and I, I, I don't know that I blame the woman, but I don't know enough about the subject just yet. I did an article about a petition that is making its way online about Stadley Rough Road specifically in three areas. So if you are a resident, like you're the person who's of that area, you're the person who's most likely uh, to feel this way, is move, pulling out of Dennis Gate, Silcam, or Woodbury and trying to make a left, the woman is contending that there should be stop signs on Stadley Rough Road there because you have blind corners and it's dangerous. Have you seen the article yet or no? No, I haven't seen the article, but I drive that road almost every day. Right. I drive that road almost every day. And it can, and it can be dangerous, right? There, there are folks that go too fast and there are blind corners. So, you know, let's talk about the, let's talk about the bigger issue of people everywhere are driving too fast. And, you know, we, it's a real problem. It, it's people have, you know, disregard for the law and they, you know, continue to, you know, do different things. You know, if, if you, when those streets were designed and built, you know, it was anticipated, it was a 25 mile an hour speed limit. And if you were pulling out of Silcam or Woodbury or Corntassel, you know, if somebody on Hawley was doing 25 miles an hour, you could easily navigate out of those roads, you know, with, with reason. And uh, the problem is, you know, people don't uh, follow the speed limit. And so now you're looking at a car down the road that could be doing 35 miles an hour. And so it's, it, it's problematic all over. It's not just sadly rough. It's not just Holly, uh, you know, and those streets there. It's, it's problematic down the city. And our, our traffic unit is out constantly, uh, you know, is, citations are being issued constantly, um, you know, it, but it it seems to be more um, more of a social thing with people. You know, our society has changed, and you know, people just you know, we, you were just talking earlier with Pat Callahan about the you know people with boats on the lake. You know, it wouldn't have happened 20 years ago, but it's happening, and so you know, things are changing and they're difficult. Pat, you know, explained that you know he's stymied by some of it, and and we get stymied as well. Did Mark, we knew about this because of dealing with Mark for so many years, but did Mark Bouton, I'm talking about, warn yep. you about the first, the end of spring and the beginning of summer, which we're in, we're in now, this time period every year, Ethan and I know from experience, the crime rate in all different regards shoots up. It just spikes real fast because people are dying to get outside. That includes criminals. And, and it just, for whatever reason, this you know, three week section is is kind of bonkers out there. Did Mark ever warn you about that? No, I mean he didn't have to warn me about it. We we actually talked about it, you know, quite often, uh, you know, about the phenomena of it. And the good thing is in Danbury, at least the, the crime is not spiking. But I mean, people are coming out of COVID. You know, they're coming out of their COVID lockdowns, and you know, everybody wants to be out there, and everybody's out there, and uh, you know, it's it's great that, you know, we're getting through this and we're moving on, but, uh, you know, there's some growing pains that come with it as well. Uh, Danbury Mayor Joe Cabo joining the show. So uh, last week, uh, Joe said, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna step aside when this term is over. I'm not going to run for mayor. And then he endorsed uh, Republican Dean Esposito as the big press conference, a uh, big to-do. And uh, Roberto Alves is the Democratic candidate who's been endorsed by the Democratic uh, Town Committee. Roberto came on our show yesterday, and he said, uh, we got a little Danbury uh, beef going on here. So Dean referred to himself as Danbury Dean in the press conference. Mm -hmm. And Roberto referenced that and said, I'm not going to be out Danburyed by anybody. I you see? That, yes. So we just have to get to the bottom of who is the most Danbury. Is it Dean? Is it Roberto? Or frankly, me? I, I think it would be you. Right.
Because he is the king of Danbury. Actually, I think, uh, you know, Dean has Dean was born in Danbury, not too far from City Hall. He grew up in Danbury. Um, you know, he's he's been here probably, he's probably been in Danbury 50, 55 years of his entire life. And so um, as far as time here, it's probably Dean. It's, I know it's not me. I came here in 85. Right. And uh, so I know it's not me, but... Uh, it probably would be Dean. Yeah, but I just got here like five minutes ago. You know, if we, if we, if we add all things up, like six years ago, whatever. Oh, so, that's right. But that's from right. Brewster, not from Tennessee. Got so, you. But, but, but still, but you I think... In, you immersed yourself in Danbury when you got here. And so did you. So I think passion counts for a lot here. So I think if we were going to do a Mr. Danbury, you know, you're in the running. You're in the talks there. Yeah, I mean, I certainly have immersed myself in Danbury over the years. Absolutely. Are you look tired at, at of Joe, playing Hold my on games. a second, Joe. <laughs> hold on a second. You understand that Lou, this is all a competitive thing for him. Oh, I know it is. And he, it means nothing. He has, to, <laughs> he, he has to be the number one Danbury guy. And he won't be happy uh, until that happens. Uh, I certainly will relinquish that to him. <laughs> that will make him happy, and it'll make this happy. I'll, I'm... I'm all about making people happy. Well, we have to let <laughs> Dean Esposito and Roberto Alves know that. Uh, you know, even though he's not going to be mayor, uh, Lewis will be out there in everybody's faces on every street. Joe, in downtown is, Joe is the first one that I've felt bad about annoying. Yeah. You know, I know it doesn't bother me to annoy everybody else. Right. Joe, you're the first one that I actually feel bad how much I put you through. You're, you haven't really put me through a lot. <laughs> I have to be honest. With you. Oh, before we let you go, uh, I just I know this is not a Danbury thing, but it's a state thing. Uh, I understand uh, that the uh, speed limit on 84 uh, heading towards Hartford has gone from 55 to 80. I'm, I'm sorry, 65 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour now. Because if no, you're going if you're going 65 on 84, I mean you're going 25. Oh, you were kidding. You were you were joking. Yes, I'm right, joking. Yeah, right, right. It's not so, 80 people. <laughs> right, and and you know it's funny because if you go up on a GPS, a lot of times it'll take you up through Rocky Hill on yeah. 91 because right. the speed limit on 91 is 65 miles an hour. But there's a good portion of 84 between here and Hartford that's 55 miles an hour. A lot of people don't realize that, but. No, they think because it's 65 in most places, it's 65 on 84 there as well. 55 seems like you're going like 20 miles. Yeah, you better, yeah. You better duck and cover. You're now a danger. (laughs) Joe Cabo, uh, we appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. You have a great weekend. You too. You too. We'll catch you next week. Yo, Joe. Bye bye. Yo, Joe.